Are you desperate to find your prince or princess charming? I was. And then one day I thought relief would come. Before I tell you the story, just make sure to download my free checklist because I want to help you become single and happy. So use the link right below here. <laughs> It happened on a day like any other and it was a great evening because I was having dinner with my friends at a restaurant and when all of a sudden a beautiful woman approached our group and I was like, wow, that's the kind of person I would want to date. And she was walking with an air of quiet confidence. She was incredibly beautiful. And then she said to my friend, hey, Jessica, how are you? And it's like, wow, that's actually pretty good so and then she said well thanks for inviting me it's like oh wow now this is the jackpot this will be the night i have to make sure that this would happen because i was desperate and her voice was warm and friendly which piqued my interest even further when we sat down for dinner i made sure to sit right next to her and greatly enjoyed speaking with that beautiful woman and listen to her conversations with others. And as we continued our meal this evening, I thought, well, she's funny. She's a fabulous sense of style and she's well-educated. And most importantly, she follows Jesus. So I believed my sad existence as a single was about to end. <laughs> I announced it to my friends. I was so sure I have met my dream wife and she is mind blowing guys. I think I'm not gonna be single anymore. And then I texted her and when I got her response, I was shocked. Because she responded, no, thank you, I don't date strangers. It's like, what? We are not strangers. We have just met at a party. Well, long story short, I was crushed once again and I began asking very difficult questions and I just realized that my life as a single person will probably would, would probably continue for a while and I need to wait and just be patient to find the right woman to spend my life or the rest of my life with. I was confused and I asked myself many painful questions like these. Why didn't she like me? Is something wrong with me? Did I something wrong or am I weird? Am I not whole? What's happening? And I searched for answers, talked to my pastor, to my friends, read a lot of books on the subject. But then one day I found this passage in the Bible. In Ecclesiastes we read, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. In Ecclesiastes 3.1. And you know what? This gave me hope because it means that seasons are part of God's nature and are part of our lives too. So we don't need to spend our lives waiting for the season of marriage just because a different season has already arrived. And that just took me so long to realize that, that actually being single was a season. Because to everything there is a season means there is a season to be single too. And this time in our lives, our purpose under the heaven is to be single. And you know what, friends? I also discovered that God has a definite purpose for us in our single season. He wants you and me to thrive. And you know, being single is good. It's not a bad thing. And as singles, we have a choice. We can either await relief from our unmarried lives or we can find our God-given unique purpose in this season of being single. Hence my question for you. Which one do you choose? Well, I choose the latter. I wanted to live a life of purpose right now. And what is incredible is because before my attitude adjustment, I was upset and I was dissatisfied. I was desperate. But afterward, I felt peaceful and content. Why? 
because I realized that my only viable option was living my life or my single life now instead of simply passing the time, waiting for my married life to begin. Although I'm still looking forward to the day when I find finally that person, I have become a fulfilled single. And you know what? You can too, right now. You don't have to wait any other minute. No, you can thrive while being single. But before we can do that, we need to understand why we sometimes feel miserable and desperate. And that's why I want to debunk a couple of myths we believe about being single and to see actually why they are wrong. You know, as singles, we believe many myths that leave us confused. Have you noticed that when you hear a myth many times, you start to believe it? Well, here's myth number one. Are you ready for that? Myth number one, you are weird because you're single. Let me tell you up front, you are normal. Nothing, nothing, nothing is wrong with you because you are still single. And by saying I'm normal, I'm not trying to justify my behavior and choices. No, I just mean that like the many sublime singles I've met throughout my life. I'm not weird just because I'm single. If you're still single too, nothing is wrong with you either. Nothing. I believe no relationship status defines whether you're weird, conventional, brilliant, or any other attributes you would like to add. No. But I didn't always believe this. Thinking I was weird set me up for a destructive, self-critical, downward spiral, causing me to search for areas of my personality I needed to improve. Well, although it seemed like a good idea at the time, I was trying to fix myself for the wrong reasons. And I was not trying to change to become a healthier person. Rather, I felt I had to change because of some perceived shortcoming in my character that caused me to remain single. It took me a long time to understand this wasn't good motivation for self-improvement. You know what? We all have issues. Yes, I do, you do, and married people do, do too. But please understand that nothing is wrong with us simply because we are single. Never forget, you are normal. And actually, you are more than normal. You are unique or even extraordinary. And that is the clarity I wish for you, that you know you are a great person. Let me say that again. You are a great person. You have jaw-dropping gifts. You have impressive dreams and the determination to be the best self you can be. Never buy into the myth that you are weird just because you have not yet met your princess or prince charming. It's a lie. You are awesome. The second myth we believe is singles are miserable. When I was at university, I thought older singles must live cheerless lives. How could they possibly be happy if they were not in a relationship, I wondered. But Joanna Gaines wrote in the Magnolia story, I always thought that the thriving would come when everything was perfect. And what I learned is that it's actually down in the mess that things get good. Like Miss Gaines, I wrongly believed everything needed to be perfect for me to be happy. But then I like her, I realized that it wasn't true. I learned just because I wanted to be in a romantic relationship did not mean I had to be unhappy while waiting for it. I could be happy anytime, right now as a single. And I also figured out that I did not have to be desperate thinking I was missing the bandwagon as I was getting older and remained unmarried. No, I found a better way to live and you can do so too. Rather than focusing on looking for the one, I now focus on God and wait to see what the future has in store for me. And I'm confident that it will be the future I am meant to have. So what is the th source of my confidence? I know God has everything under control and this everything includes my singleness and my marital status no longer determines the, the state of my mind. 
If God is taking care of my situation, there is hope, even if I don't see it. And this quote by Dale Carnegie illustrates what focusing on God does for me. He said, two men looked out from prison bars. One saw the mud, the other saw the stars. I like that. When I focus on the stars instead of the mud, my life feels joyful. And because of this attitude adjustment, I now am more likely to meet singles who also are fulfilled and overflowing with joy and hope. Myth number three, being married is better than being single. Mm -mm. What would your friend or pastor say if you asked him, is being married better than being single? Well, the Apostle Paul would give you a definite answer. He said no. He understood the benefits of his singleness, that it enabled him to live his dream. Paul considered his relationship status as an outstanding privilege. He wrote, Now as a concession, not a command, I say this, I wish that all were as I am. But each has his gift from God, one of one kind and one of another. To the unmarried and the widows I say that it is good for them to remain single as I am. It is good, friends, to be single. It's nothing bad. Paul, the founder of the vast majority of the early churches and the one who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, was pro-single and encouraged singles to follow his example. Soak that in for a minute. Being single is not inferior to being married, nor anything evil to avoid. It's just different. Being single is good, so enjoy it. Myth number four, if you're single, you are not complete. Have you believed that? Do you think you're not complete? Well, believing that single people are not whole individuals sets us up for disappointments and profound emotional hardships. I often dated women thinking they'd be able to identify and fix what was missing in me doesn't work like that guys <laughs> I was convinced I couldn't be a whole person without a partner in my life but then I realized that no spouse can ever complete me and you won't find a soulmate who will fill all your voids no that doesn't exist it is like a man buying an amazing sports car or if you like the most beautiful dress to make up for some deficits in your characters it doesn't work it doesn't work like that as human beings, no matter if we are single, married, or divorced, we are never complete. That's a fact. We are never complete and we will be never complete. We are flawed and none of us is perfect. The only way to find completeness is in God. And as Paul wrote, so you also are complete through your union with Christ. You do not need a relationship with another person to be a whole person yourself. No, you just need God. And to quote Mel Robbins, no other person can complete you. You're not a puzzle with a missing piece. So remember that you're not a puzzle with a missing piece. With God, you are complete. If you let Jesus fill you, he will make you complete right now in your single season. In him, nothing is missing. We are 100% whole while we are single. Isn't that great news? Remember, one is a whole number which means that you have everything to live a happy and fulfilled life in this season. And you know, as a bonus, your completeness will be a blessing for your future partner. So in your single season, you may wonder if there is something wrong with you that is causing you to remain single. Perhaps you believe one of the myths told about being single we've just looked at, but these myths have the potential to confuse you. So debunk these myths, get rid of them. And just remember, you are not weird simply because you're single. No relationship status will ever define whether you're normal or not. As a single person, you're fantastic and being single is what? It's being single is good. It's a good thing. So thank you so much for watching and please make sure to download my free checklist and thank you so much also for the subscribes and the likes and I love reading your comments so thank you very much and I see you in the next one.